In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at three enhancements for PowerDirector 365 subscribers that are now available as of April 2021. It relates to improvements in using LUTs, improvements with the color picker, and improvements with producing a range of your video. Let's look first of all at the improvements of using a LUT. I have a video here on the screen and it's a nice shot and I have some color in it but I'd like to enhance it with a lookup table or LUT. You find the LUTs in the effects room, that's your FX on the left side. I can click on that or press the F4 function key. That will get me into some of my LUTs and I'm in my outdoor category here. I'll just take and drag and drop one of them and put it right on top of my video. And now we see it's got a bluish tint. Well, maybe I like the LUT, but I don't like the intensity of the LUT. I can now modify it. In PowerDirector 365 with this enhancement, I click on the Effect button above the timeline. And now I have a new slider called Strength. This enables me to modify the intensity of the LUT. So as you watch, I'm dialing it back from 100 to something somewhat more subtle. And now I can vary the intensity of the application of that particular LUT. And so it gives me a lot more flexibility in making it look exactly the way I want to. If I want to remove the LUT, I can always simply click the minus and it will cause it to disappear. Let's go back to a warm LUT and take a warm one instead, put that on. And I'll click on the effect button likewise. The strength always starts out at 100%. I'll dial it back just a little bit, make it not quite so hot. And that looks a little better for me, around 40%. And now I have changed that so it looks really good. So that's a way in which you can modify the intensity of a LUT with the new enhancements for PowerDirector 365. Let's look at the second one and that relates to the color picker. So I'm going to go back to my main screen and let's add a title. I'll click on the T on the left side to get into my titles, drag down my generic, my title, and then we'll ex extend the duration of it a little bit. And I'll double click on it to get into the title designer. Now the color picker we're going to look at applies whenever you're using every any kind of color selection, not simply title, but I'm going to drag across this and just type in uh, outdoors. And we'll change the font family so you can see it better. I'll use this one here and then we'll increase the size. Now you can see it very well. Okay, so we have the word outdoors. Now I want to change the color. Now normally we can use the little color picker here, select from preview, and when I click on that I can move anywhere and I, I want to. Let's take maybe the yellow in the trees up here and I can select that color and click on OK. And now I've changed it. Let me show you a different way to do that using the color picker. We're not going to use the eyedrop here. We're just going to click on the color. And now we're in our color picker. We have a new option called Select From Screen. This allows me to do what I just did before. I can take that same color and I can actually add, this is my color, I can add it to a custom color by clicking here. Let's click on Select from Screen again. I can select it from any place on my screen, even inside of PowerDirector. But let's take something, say, from oh, let's, from these darker red trees here. Click on that. And I'll add it to a custom color here. And there is my new custom color. One thing you also can do now is you can take anything that is on your computer screen at the moment and do that. Now, I have something I can't record. It's a picture that's on a different part of my computer screen. I'll do select from screen and as you watch I'm going to change it and the eyedropper will change the word outdoors to blue because I'm looking at a blue sky on another picture. So anything that you can put on your computer screen you can copy the color from. So I'll take this blue and click on it there and now I have the blue and I'll add that one to my custom colors and now I have that blue. So it's a nice way to take any color and modify it. You don't have to memorize the R, G, and B values or the hexadecimal values that you see on the right. 
You can use those if you want, but this is a very simple way to do that, much as you have seen for years in Adobe products. So that's an easy way to change those features. And I forgot to save what I did, so I'll go back here, click on Custom Color, and then click on OK, and now I've got my blue back. So we'll close our Title Designer and we'll save this. And now I have my Outdoors. Let's look at one other feature that's enhanced in April 2021 for subscribers. That relates to production. I'm going to click on the Produce button at the top of the screen. It's going to save my project. Now if I look below my preview screen, I see I have a slider. This gives me three ways in which I can modify the duration and location of the segment I want to produce. Let me give you the first way. The first way is simply use the mouse. You can take it and hover over the mark in and mark out. Those are those orange yellow boxes. And I can start it over here and I can end it where I want to back over, back over here. And now I have chosen this segment as a segment I'm going to produce. Another way you can do this is you can use the time codes. Say I decide that I want to start, let's say I'll set this to zero, and I want to start 30 seconds in, and no frames, and there's where I place my marker. I click on the mark in over here, and that's where it started, and maybe I want to go to 50 seconds, so let's just change the first time code, the leftmost one to 50, and then I'll click the mark out, and now I see I go from 30 to 50, my duration is 20 seconds. So that's the second way in which I can do that by using that particular option. So I can either use the mouse or I can use the time codes to specify that. Or I don't need the time codes at all if I want to be a little more generic in deciding where I start and where I, I stop. I just click the playhead anywhere on any frame that I like, click mark in, and I click it again over here and I'll do a mark out and there I've done it by eyeballing what I see on the screen. So those are three ways in which you can do that. And then when you're done you simply click on start and it will produce only the range between the mark in and mark out.